Huh. It was Toronto meets Reggae and they both go and have a drink with the fucking weekend and then Kanye mm. West comes in for no reason at all and they all just start and fucking party jumping next about. Door, having a party next door, maybe yeah. even two houses down because they can't stand how lit it is. And then they all went on stage, brought a fucking Ableton push with them, slammed a keyboard down, loaded a, a fucking sample pack and they went off. And that's, a, that, a, that's what this was. Oh, and Adele's just in the crowd playing with her pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Number 15, back again with the white Post Malone. You always sit. <laughs> what? Um, the white Iverson, clearly. <laughs> We'll come back after yeah, we, we will come this. back. We'll come so back. So we're back after that. What's that? Twenty-five minute discussion. Twenty-five minute discussion. Twenty-five on, uh, minute discussion. What politics. Was yeah. Well, that's the thing. We were gonna get this started a lot earlier. It was actually light outside, and then I was going for a shit, and um, because you know rock Nature stars need shit too. And then my Tory prick of a brother decides to start talking about the gender gap and other such issues, which inevitably derailed us by a good twenty-five minutes. Tory shit aside, we're gonna be talking about sick kick. Mm. Something a bit different. An artist who is, I want to say new, but if you go back to his old music, you realise that he, like, he's not new, he's just new to the sort of mainstream. By background, he's an EDM producer mm -hmm. who just happens to be able to sing mm. fucking splendidly. He's a great singer. Vocally, he's very Toronto. Well, he's from Canada, so. Ah, oh, I've been there, bitch, from Canada. Canada. I think that bitch. It's from Canada. She is indeed from, from the six. But he's a very talented vocalist as well. And it wasn't either of us that discovered him. Now, when I say discovered, I mean just found him. Yes. It was so, one of our boys. Big shout out to V1 and the only Ibby Y7. The videos I've been in, and in fact, all of Dizzy's videos, they tend to be very hip hop orientated or at least hip hop tasting. Um, tasting? Really? Yeah. But in <laughs> So this video is a little bit different in the sense that we're going to be talking primarily on the production side of it. Mm. I don't know what I'm doing with my hands. You're doing the politics but thing. Yeah. You've been listening to my brother, you're doing the box, mate. We're going to be talking mainly about the production set and you'll see why if you haven't already seen this, but given that you're watching the reaction video, you probably have seen the original. Listen, I've seen this guy before. I've been very, very impressed with him. It was the Jason Derulo mashup and it makes mm. you realise how many fucking hits Jason Derulo had. And I think it was a Drake one as well, Hotline Bling and some other stuff. He did uh, like Hotline Bling and he did a sort of mashup of One Dance. And the Snapchat one as well, which is fucking lit. If you've not seen that, check that out. It's short and beautifully sweet. But this one, I have not seen. You have, haven't? Over the past 24 hours, I've probably seen it <laughs> at least a dozen or so times. So without further ado, let's do a little sick kick. Hey, oh, here he is. Here he is. Daft Punk wannabe. <laughs> oh, no. oh, shit. Fucking Kylo Ren. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit. This is so cheese, man. Okay. Got the drums loaded. Showing all the samples that like he's not just sort of... It is live, right? It, this is live, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. That's what he was doing all that to sort of show they are live samples. Oh. He does a lot with, with the... What, well, I mean, the falsetto? Oh! Distortion! Sounds like they start a false alarm by weekend. It does, it sounds very weekend. I like who does the pan cheek thing. Let's get ready to do this. <laughs> I love reggae, so I love the reggae chords already. Mm. Make it bun them 2.0. Yeah. A little bit of dubstep. Dubstep's a bit 2012. <laughs> we off that. What he was doing there. <laughs> mm. I love that this is live. Oh. This makes it so much better. What do we call it? What sensibilia? We go for the lungs and a sensibilia. Who I have to take this? It's like the pillia. Got my women and my riding on the hands on my don't want to run for me and my dojo. It's like weekend with reggae, with you know, like hip hop. It's, it's brilliant. Oh, it, his vocals are very weekend if you listen to Party Monster or yeah. Starbuck. Similar. Distortion, auto tune, hybrid. Maybe Melody. Oh, that vocal run. Vocal sense. That's the definition of using your voice as an engine. Yeah, of Do that again, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> Let me explain what's just happened. Mm. So I've come down to Glasgow from Aberdeen and not brought my camera equipment with me. I I'm just using my phone to record the video. <laughs> so that this was so lit that the phone was just couldn't take any more. The phone was trying to turn up, but because of the placement of the books, it couldn't. And all it could do was fall in its face and just accept his fate. Shit is fire so far. This is like this is like a halftime interval at a fucking theatre show, man. Yeah. So far, lit. So let's all pretend like that didn't happen and just carry on. Worse for me. We may come back to that pause and see what he had on. There's a preset. He's just sampled himself. Himself. Yeah. <laughs> he does that in the Snapchat video as well. And his gear is so clean. Like. Me not gonna leave you. You know I need you. I'm never let you go. Light up the burner tonight. We. How does he know where the mic is? But I'll be able to see that. He's got. If you look at his mask, he's got two eye sockets. Ah, so he does have eyes. Move to the base. Even camera stuff. <laughs> I love how he's got that. That vocal riff is fucking gorgeous. That little sample. Touches man. Yeah. Guys are pro. Mate, take a break. Good show on this one, sweet. <laughs> Deserve a standing ovation more than any X Factor yep. act in history. Absolutely. Give them a fucking hand. Fan fucking tastic. Sit down. I mean, honestly, that's the beauty of the blade. You could literally take a cow's head off, probably. I mean, I wouldn't want to take a cow's head off, but like, see if you literally boom, mm -hmm. boom, 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 like a fucking kick drum. Yeah. Decapitation. Well, well, you could take the head off with this one, and then you would use that one to carve it up. To carve it up. Mm, and then you got beef. And then you cut out the middle, man. Fuck a supermarket, man. So that was World on Fire by Sick Kick. I particularly love this, not just because it's a dope track on its own, right? Mm. But because I can appreciate it as... On a technical level. On a technical level and the sort of, you know, producing stuff that goes on behind that. So you've got the sampling and then you've got the sort of vocal effects that he does with oh. the reverb and the distortion. Just the fact that all that is done on the fly. Well, on the fly. Maybe. I mean, it'd be pre-planned. He's probably practiced it, but... I well, it'll be like, the, the way I look at these videos, right, and I, I thoroughly enjoy that. I didn't expect anything less, having seen his previous stuff, but it's almost like a gymnastics routine, right? You, you've got it all kind of planned down because you want it to be fucking dope and you know what's going into what, into what. There's a little room for improvisation, but at the same time, if you don't pull it off, you've not pulled it off sort of thing. Now, I don't know if that was his first take. Probably not. All I care is it looked dope. It sounded dope. As, as we said, the technical level, the way he obviously had presets reverb distortion things like that on the knobs themselves mm -hmm. which the way he was using them was just unreal to not even so much that even the bits where he's you pointed out he's waving the mic mm -hmm. um the way he's using his voice his falsetto is gorgeous he's just got a voice that really lends itself to those presets you yeah know, and to the and sound if you look at the track on a technical level right there's not that much going on there's really not there's the reggae chords, there's the hi-hat, there's the drums, and there's that sort of kick and... That sick kick. That... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> there's that kick and that dubstep sort of growl noise, and then it's just he's using his own voice for the synths. That's mm. not that many layers for a track that sounds 
this well put together well it's, it sounds and looks maybe more complex than it is because a lot of people that are going to be watching this not that we're you know fucking connoisseurs we're not Pensado's place we're still learning like anyone else but a lot of people that are watching this will probably see it virally or some some of their pals will say yo this is dope send it to them so they're going to see all the flashing lights and understandably as we were when we first started producing you know be a bit wow it's like a fucking Star Trek spaceship in a way Yeah. but you break it down and uh, as you said the Ableton push it's a slick piece of gear, but if it, what was your phrasing? It was. It's it's a good piece of equipment to have, but let's face it, it's a glorified launch pad. Yeah. Right? There's a billion other bits of kit that will do just that. So you might think a keyboard is a keyboard, but in terms of responsiveness, in terms of um, gimmicks, in terms of the front doorbell going off while we're recording, which is a bit of a pain in the ass, but we'll auto tune that. He seems to have, you know, I, th I think through his videos, he's obviously accumulated, you know, what you would call YouTube wealth and has been able to invest it in himself. Well, listen, I mean, the kit is not that big of a deal, right? It's more to do with your skill and what you know any bit of kit with the same technology can do. His MIDI keyboard can do anything that any other MIDI keyboard can, can do, fundamentally, right? Press keys and they fire off the samples that, that that they're mapped to. It's no big deal. The same with the same with the Ableton push. It's just it's just a launch pad that has knobs on it. But you can do that with any launch pad. But the point I would make on that though is what expensive gear does allow you to do is streamline your process and cut out the busy work. Not really, because Well, think about it. The one wee piece of busy work you've got to do is go up and down, right? Yeah, that's the only thing. His his big keyboard, he won't need to sort of hit the you know, he won't have octave up and down buttons. Uh, he won't have any latency. Up. He'll have all his favourite packs preloaded. Now this is all stuff that we can do, but it will be a lot easier for him. It will not be a lot easier because the packs come from Ableton. Loading those sample packs onto the the push is the same as you would load it onto a launch pad. Ah. Right. What I'm saying is that fundamentally they do the same thing. And the latency issue has got nothing. Well, nothing. It's it's, it's got a minuscule percentage to do with the kit. It's more to do with your sort of behind the scenes setup as in well, your I'll audio tell, interface I'll and tell your, you what, your processor. Though, though the latency doesn't matter about what kit you have. Just because he has enabled push doesn't mean he, he's going to have less latency than you. He might have a shit sound card, you might have a good sound card, therefore you've got better latency. Well, right? I'll tell you what, I'll defer to you on this because when it comes to keyboards and whatnot, that's kind of his realm, right? He's he's the Ableton junkie. I'm still using Mixcraft 7. Shout out fucking <sighs> Acoustica. I'll tell you right now, it does everything I need. Mixcraft 7 is fucking underrated. It's kind of a reason why I appreciate this song so much as well because my realm has always been, whereas Dizzy is an actual producer, you know, I can make beats sort of thing, but you make instrumentals. There's a difference between making a beat and an instrumental, right? You actually create compositions, mm -hmm. which is something that's always kind of eluded me. When it comes to what sort of production I do, it's ordinarily vocal production, right? So it's vocal effects, it's distortion, mm -hmm. it's auto-tune, it's automation, it's pitch changing, it's all of that stuff. And some of that that was on this song is unreal. The mm -hmm. See the... Wah, 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 but that bit, it's almost like kind of dubstep stylings, but it's not, you know, it just kind of... um, You know, what's not it? Fucking Enya. Or, or Galadriel out Lord of the Rings. Her vibe. That's the vibe I get off that shit. I'm getting Galadriel vibes off that fucking vocal pattern, man. Like Galadriel surrounded by like candlelit lakes and maybe like a kind of uh, Yakuza. Like you remember in Yakuza? No, it was Shenmue. You had these like pink trees surrounding the lake and Galadriel's just like, take this veil, listen to this, Frodo, we gonna be all right. And she gonna pronounce the T. Because she knows Pharrell's a real one. She grew up on Neptune. She's like 300 years old. What the fuck did I just listen to? <laughs> but no, on the real, there was a hell of a lot to appreciate yeah. about this track, man. From, from your perspective as, you know, a, a kind of more predominant producer, was there anything that kind of stuck out for you as sheesh, in the words of Young Thug? The singing and the sort of, you know, vibing and the sort of, I guess you could call it rapping, that was amazing because he, he went from doing this amazing vocal synth using just his voice and some effects to spitting some fucking bars. Oh, yeah. And, and it was amazing. And to top it all off, I'm a huge, huge, huge reggae fan. It was all based around a reggae vibe. Man. And it was absolutely fantastic. It was Toronto meets reggae and real shit, not fucking Drake's attempts. It was... Views. Like, <laughs> yeah. This was re a real collaboration of yeah. sounds, man. It was Toronto meets reggae and they both go and have a drink with the fucking weekend and then Kanye mm. West comes in for no reason at all and they all just start and fucking party jumping next about. Door, having a party next door, maybe yeah. even two houses down because they can't stand how lit it is. And then they all went on stage, brought a fucking Ableton push with them, slammed a keyboard down, loaded a, a fucking sample pack and they went off. And that's, then, that, and that's what this was. Oh, and Adele's just in the crowd playing with her pussy. <laughs> <laughs> 
Shout out to Adele. Hello indeed, Kara. <laughs> but no, um, and what I will say, obviously, word of the day, you'll be sick of hearing it by now, but technically it was amazing. But what makes these sort of pieces go from good to great is that melodically and as a song and as a structure, there was obviously that he still had a hook. The wah, 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 It was structured. There was a yeah. structure. Yeah. Um, aesthetically, I love the fucking feel of the room. Not going to ramble on about that, but I like the touch. The one thing I wasn't hugely keen on, um, and, and I'll be honest, maybe I'll take some flack from this from some of his fans, but the mask thing, right? You know, I, I, I feel like it's a wee bit played out, you know, like, but bear in mind, I am so used to recently the whole mysterious man of R&B thing. You had it with Weekend during the trilogy days. You had it with Party Next Door not wanting to do interviews. The mask itself, Daft Punk, Kylo Ren. Yeah. You had, <laughs> Kylo Ren. You, had you, got, you got Darth Vader doing the mask, Kylo Ren, mm. Dead Mouse, Daft Punk. Yo, I always said Daft Vader was sound good with a like you know a high pass filter. Primarily, this was based around the production. And sort of just showing off. I mean, like... It was oh, he was stunting. He was flexing. It was a look at what I can do and look how fucking amazing it is. And you know you're fucking impressed. Don't even bullshit to yourself. Yeah, it was like fucking show and tell for adults. And I was impressed. So that was Sick Kick, World on Fire. If you enjoyed that, then there's three things. Thing number one, go to his channel and watch the rest of his videos. Mm -hmm. Support him. He's an absolutely amazing artist, amazing producer, amazing singer, very talented. He's coming up and he's coming up fast. Get on the train while you still can. Thing number two, go follow us on Snapchat and Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channels. Links will be done. Needs done. Links will be in the normal places. Click them. Do you have a thing number three? I don't think I have a thing number three. Thing number three, please refer to things one and two. So yeah, thanks for watching as ever. Obviously, it's not my channel, but I appreciate everyone that subscribes and watches this guy's videos, man. Keep supporting great art this guy puts in. As I said before, a hell of a lot more effort than most. So yeah, <laughs> I mean, again, we're in my house, but yeah, it's a nice locale. Where else do you get a fucking stolen where traffic else, corner? Where else back? do you get a VLC tribute such as that? Tell nah. me. So as always, thank you very much for spending your time with me. If you're stuck this far and if, you, <laughs> if you're watching this right now, this late into the video, you are one of the realest, the realest, you're one of the real ones and I appreciate your support more than everyone else, everyone else can fuck off, you are the one that is real. Yeah, shit got, shit got a bit cocktail party for me there, but, <laughs> but thank you everyone for watching and supporting this motherfucker, it's always good. So that was that, thank you very much for watching, have a nice day. Yes, we're the we're recording you. Recording. <laughs> uh, and then I told him he can go and fuck himself as Tory R. Oh, sorry, I didn't see you. <laughs> <laughs> and then I raped his mug. <laughs> I'd rather be a snow Mexican than a fucking Duncan. Let me tell you that. I cannot say coon on a YouTube video. That no, you cannot. <laughs> <clears throat> Thinking. Like your channel. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs>